build Brace Land in the middle of the Aussie bush. It's been a complicated process. There are so many incredible sets. Absolutely brilliant. Why can't you see what you do? Kathy Martin or Sam as I have always called her, we are a true partnership. She can take my terrible scribbles and collages and execute it at such a level that it's pretty rare. Here we go, we're rolling. And action, playback. My initial thoughts when I first read the script was we had to bridge three decades through the design of the sets. Each decade had a color palette that Baz specified. Okay, here we go, guys. Ready. And action. We're starting off with the young Elvis before he became famous. It's Beale Street, it's Memphis, it's darker, it's grittier colours, classic greens and blues and earthy colours. All the buildings are very well worn and very old. He had Beale Street stars in his eyes. Oh, I loved Beale Street. I, I really loved everything to do with Beale Street. It was extraordinary. There was so much attention to detail, whether you were outside on the street or in every little shop. It was like six city blocks or something like that, of the most detailed street vendors and stores, and it was just incredible. So we're sitting in Graceland. The proportions and all the architectural details are based on blueprints that we were very lucky to access from the estate. Baz and I, we got to go to Graceland before we started filming. Right before I went in, I got to meet Priscilla, and she said, have you been inside the house yet? And I said, no. She said, I truly believe that's where her spirit is. And I went in there and I spent the whole day in there by myself and it was just amazing. It was remarkable getting to be there and then suddenly be in Australia and see the sets and how much they feel like the real thing. It was really remarkable. Three, two, one, and action! We use Graceland as very much the symbol and expression of his success. We see it from the exterior, when he first arrives at Graceland with his parents, we see its first incarnation in the 50s when they've moved in and done a number of renovations. The house, for instance, had floorboards. They carpeted all in red carpet. Although there were many changes from the 50s through the late 70s, Baz felt it was important to take the house as it is now, because in millions of people's minds around the world, that's what we all think of Graceland, and that became a symbol for us for the sort of peak of Elvis's career and an expression of what we know as Elvis's interior. Hey! Watch it. The bedroom is pretty surreal because it's a space that very few people in real life have ever been in. Make sure he doesn't clip your wings, honey. He won't. I'm gonna go see him in Vegas. It's a beautiful set to be in, and it's velvet and satin and gold, and Elvis used to close all the curtains, and it was like a mausoleum. We ran from that set into the downstairs of Graceland, which is bright and airy and light. It was about the difference in him putting himself in this bedroom and closing it off. The only time that you're happy is so when I... you're on stage. And in between that, you're a ghost. So I give you everything you could want. What I want is a husband. You walk in through this door and you feel like you're right in the real life Graceland. The attention to detail, it really makes your job easy, especially when you've got the costumes and, and the hair and the makeup and everyone's, you know, talking in their accents. Will you please stay? I have to go. <laughs> I still believe you have to let me go. You have to let me go. You have to let me go. 
As Elvis becomes more famous, the colour seems to be stronger throughout each set to end up in Vegas where it's flashy and, you know, lots of lights and bright oranges and reds and yellows. Mighty big stage. They just said Las Vegas. Oh, the international stage. Man, that was such a massive thing. And that's actually what Elvis remarked as well, was just how, how big it was. You could get lost in a place like this. At the International Hotel, we had very limited original documentation of the showroom. We look at stock footage and we can see snippets of, of items, but we had to have our own input into creating that. And those designs were then tweaked a little bit, I guess, to make it visually more exciting. But we always based all our dressing elements based on reference. Right. Weeping, leaping up and down, forgetting oneself. An out of body experience live! We have an incredible operating gold curtain in the international showroom, and there was discussion when I first started of that being a visual effect, but it was wonderful that we were able to make the curtain to allow the actor to interact with such a curtain and just create that scene. Yeah, those gold curtains, the way they came down and you're actually on the stage and you're looking down at the lights and the audience and everything and there's these certain moments where it transcends the feeling of making a film. I sort of have a very high expectation of my departments, so any recreation they're just gonna nail it. Or things that Baz imagined in the script that didn't really exist. The idea that people can read a script, get together and create something out of nothing are the things that always amaze me. Or some real trees and real emotions like Ain't no one gonna stop me, The entire team is amazing. Every set, the attention to detail makes you feel alive in every space. Because I love you too much. 